Hey, yo, what's up, pimps? It's your boy, Khoi. I just want to say I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry for posting depressing content for the past couple of days. I really, and this is my true intention here, I really want to let people know that they are not alone. And if you have these thoughts, just know that somewhere out there, a human being like you and me is going through the same experiences. I'm not saying all experiences are the same. I'm, I'm not diminishing your suffering in any way. I'm just saying you're not alone and your feelings, your experiences are valid. We go through these experiences sometimes. It's bound to happen as a human being. If you choose to live a rich and meaningful life, that is, if you dare to live, you're going to go through these experiences. It's not always going to be up, 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 upwards and onwards. It's going to be like this, peaks and troughs. That's all I want to do. I don't really want to add any more suffering to another human's life. I mean, I put the trigger warning at the start. If you know you're prone to be triggered by these contents, you should have clicked off. And I'm sorry, but yeah, I did warn you. But I, I'm, I'm gonna take full responsibility. I did post depressing content and yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yesterday at work, my colleagues were talking about um, a member of One Direction who recently killed himself. I don't know if it's an accident, whether it was intentional or it was accidental. I don't want to speculate and I don't want to read into it at this point in time. I feel, I feel for him. I feel for him. Something that I've realized very earlier on in my life, around the time that I had my attempts, is that no one is prone to sorrow in this life. Depression doesn't spare anyone. Like I said, if you choose to live um, a rich and meaningful life, if you, if you dare to go out and live your life, you're going to go through these experiences. And depression doesn't spare you based on your social economic status. The poor gets it. The rich gets it sometimes even more. I realized very early on in my life that having money, having everything in the world will not make you happy. It doesn't matter if you're a rock star, you have billions of fans, billions of subscribers, you never have to work a day in your life again. You become successful at a young age, people flock to you, people want to be with you. you're still going to get depression. And I'm not saying that having money will make you sad or having no money will make you sad. I'm just saying it's a state of being. Happiness is a state of being. You just have to be. You don't have to become in order to be happy. And the happiest people are the people who... And I hate to say this. People who are okay with wherever they are in their lives. I'm not saying to be complacent, uh, to be living life passively. I'm saying to accept wherever you are in order to reach this true happiness. So it doesn't matter if you're at rock bottom, doesn't matter if you have a lot of money, although it will be easier for you to be happy if you can, afford to live your life and you know when your basic needs are met and even even then you're still prone to depression it's a state of being you know true happiness many times i think to myself and i'm talking about my younger self here in my early 20s 
Many times I compare myself to my peers back home in Vietnam and to my peers around me here in Australia. I think to myself as a 20 year old, by this age, I should have achieved more. I look at my peers and I see them succeeding at school, whether it's school, whether it's, you know, their job, their career, their relationships. I look at them and I compare myself to them. Uh, completely ignoring our different circumstances, our upbringing, our childhood traumas and you know what we are drawn towards and what our aversions are. I compare myself as if, as if I'm, I'm comparing apple to oranges, you know. And I think to myself, these guys, man, they are doing so well at school. They must be so happy. These guys, they already bought a house. They already, you know, graduated uni. They already um, got a job. And meanwhile, I'm here at the psychiatric department. You know, I, I've just failed at killing myself twice. I look at these guys. They finished university. They already got a job. They already put down the first payment for the mortgage. They bought a house. Whatever, they're already sending money back to Vietnam. I, I look at my peers. I look at my Vietnamese peers. And I look at the Australian peers, you know, like these guys, they know what the fuck they are doing. They graduated, they know exactly what field they want to specialize in. We all graduated with the same degree and, and, and look at them, they're starting their own business, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're climbing up the corporate ladder, they, they're already doing everything with their lives. They're moving at such a quick pace. And I'm left behind. I look at people younger than me getting into relationships they got married, they're going strong, they already had a kid. I look at them and I think to myself, man, if I could just have a little bit of that, if I could just get married, if I could just buy a house, you know, if I just have everything, I'll be happy. You know, if I just get that next big job, you know, going back to uni, upgrade my salary, get a new job title, you know, sucking up to management or become management, I'll be happy. Will it? Will it bring me happiness? I don't know, man. And I know, I'm going to tell you something. I know this is not an equal comparison. But last night after work, I was scrolling again. I was trying to get myself to fall asleep. And I looked up things that generally interest me. I like to look at nature and I looked, I, I want to look at, um, you know, all the creatures, all the living beings in order to perhaps learn something about myself because we are not completely detached from nature. There's this thing called negligible senescence. Um, in biology, it means that if a creature has negligible senescence, it means that um, the process of disease and aging is negligible. So these creatures can pretty much live forever um, biologically, naturally. And some of these creatures are, as you all know, the mortal jellyfish they pretty much live forever. But the other thing that really captured my, uh, my attention was, you know, the Greenland shark. These big ass creatures that live in the deep water. They grow to massive sizes and then their metabolism is slow as frick. So they're big ass creatures. They move slowly, they swim at a pace of three kilometers per hour. Very slow creatures, very big creatures. And I look at their lives and some people might think to themselves, they live a meaningless life, just wallowing in that deep, dark water, completely devoid of any achievements. You know, they move at a slow pace, they eat, I don't know what they eat. They, they probably eat shit. They move so freaking slow. 
and yet they live pretty much forever. And I don't know the true mechanisms for why they die. But man, these things, they reach sexual maturity after almost a century later. So these are the late bloomers. These are the slow moving creatures. And in the end they prevail. And I know this is not a one to one comparison. They are not the same as humans. Same thing with lobsters and crabs. These creatures, they have the protein, the gene that allow them to essentially live forever. Don't quote me on this, I'm not a biologist. And you know how crabs, every so often, they have to molt because they have an exoskeleton and if they want to grow, uh, they don't want to be crushed to death. They don't want to, you know, deteriorate because of their shells starting to break down and bacteria gets inside it. They have to molt. They have to grow. They have to get outside of the shell. They gamble with their lives. They risk being vulnerable, getting hurt in order to grow a bigger shell. Um, and they can pretty much live forever. However, every single time they grow, every single time they move forward, make advances in their lives, i.e. achieving more, acquiring more development, more mass, it's more exhausting for them to grow. And eventually, this process of continual development and growing will completely exhaust them. They won't have enough resources to fuel this growth. And so they die because of that too much development, too much mass, too much growing um, past their former self, outgrowing their shell will lead them to inevitable death. And I wonder if it's the same here with humans. After you have achieved everything in life, all of this money, all of this status, all of this women, all of this attraction, will you truly reach happiness in the end? Is this how you reach heaven on earth? And I wonder, I wonder with those who move very quickly in life, becoming successful at a young age, having billions of fans, money, status, you know, always chasing that next big goal, always developing, growing. And I'm not saying to be stagnate forever, but I'm also not advocating for always, you know, living on the fast lane. At some point, you've got to slow down and enjoy the ride. I think that's true happiness. But I don't know what I'm talking about. I haven't lived my life. I don't know your life. I might very well be wrong. But every single time, you know, I choose to live, it's a gamble. Do I gamble with my life and choose to move forward? Do I choose to take that risk? Or am I happy with wherever I am? Anyways, hope you guys are doing well. Stay strong. God bless. I love you. And um, I'm going to go to work now. <laughs> Got to make that money somehow. Got to be able to afford food to eat and pay the rent. I love you. And until next time, I'll speak to you later. Don't think too much.